The marriage of Aisha radiallahu anha to Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa And I brought some of the books that I'm going to be referencing. Especially to make sure that everybody realizes that I'm not just googling some searches on the internet. This research was done by looking at actual books and looking at actual asaneed and looking at actual reporters. And I'm going to inshallah present this with some detail as summarized as I can, trying to fulfill the haq to understand this issue. And I'm going to ask you, bear with, you uh, bear with me, relax, I mean, don't start jumping to conclusions until I finish discussing the issue. Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he was married to Khatija radiallahu anha. And while he was married to Khatija radiallahu anha, he didn't marry anybody else. The age of Khatija radiallahu anha we've discussed, even if we take her to be 25 to 28, she was still a few years older than Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa who was at 25 of age. And while she was alive, he didn't marry anybody else. When she passed away, who was the first one he married? Sauda radiallahu anha. And she was older than Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa And as we mentioned earlier, as the books of Tariq mentioned that she was not known for beauty. I mean internally, I'm sure she was from Ummahat al mumineen she was the most beautiful of people with her akhlaq. But for the physical appearance, as the ulama have written, she was not very good. And she was older in age. But she was an experienced woman who would be a good mother to raise the daughters of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa So he married her. But then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala chose it's very important. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala chose for Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa to marry Aisha radiallahu anha. This is the will of Allah. And this is reported in the hadith in Al-Bukhari, in Sahih Al-Bukhari, hadith 3682. Where Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa told Aisha radiallahu anha himself that two dreams, twice in my dreams I saw you. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala revealed to me through those dreams and the dreams of the Anbiya are wahi. That I was to marry you before I even proposed to you. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala chose this. And in the dream, Aisha radiana was shown to the Prophet sallallahu wrapped in silk. And this is one of the signs towards dream interpretation. That if somebody sees a dream after making istikhara to marry somebody, and they are shown to them wrapped in silk and then open or, or uncovered, then this is an indication that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala wants this for them. So Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam he saw these dreams and because of this in Mecca around two to three or two years or a year before Hijrah he proposed to Abu Bakr al-Siddiq radiallahu anhu. Now Aisha radiallahu anha was already engaged. She was engaged to a Zubair and this has been mentioned by Ibn Sa'ad in his tabaqat with authentic asaneed that Aisha radiallahu at the time was already engaged. That means that she was at an age that according to Arab tradition of the time it was normal for a woman to be engaged. So she was already engaged but Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala chose this so Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam he informed Abu Bakr radiallahu anhu. Abu Bakr radiallahu and his wife through a long narration, they, they got out of the engagement. And according to the hadith that is in Al Bukhari, that is hadith 3607, Khatija radiallahu anha died three years before the hijrah. And Aisha radiallahu anha was proposed and the nikah was done. It was not consummated, but she was given in marriage two years before the hijrah. In another narration, one year before the Hijrah. But the consummation didn't happen in Mecca. The actual marriage, yani when the wife joins the husband, happened in Medina. Tayyip. 
How old was Aisha radiallahu anha at the time of being given and at the time of the marriage actually consummated? This is a question we will discuss. Before I get into the narration from Al-Bukhari that Aisha radiallahu anha mentioned herself, I want to mention some things. Imam Ibn Kathir, one of the famous scholars in the book Al-Bidaya wa Nihaya, which I have here with me, he discusses the age of Asma bint Abi Bakr. Asma radiallahu anha, we discussed earlier in the Durus as well. Ibn Kathir mentioned that she was 10 years older than Aisha radiallahu anha. They were sisters. And Imam Ibn Kathir says that she was 10 years older than Aisha radiallahu anha. He also mentions that she died at 73 Hijri. She died in what year? 73 years after the Hijrah of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa Everybody with me so far? You good? Asma, the older sister of Aisha radiallahu anha, she was 10 years older than Aisha radiallahu anha, and she died 73 years after making Hijrah. With me? At the time of death, she was 100 years of age. According to Ibn Kathir, she was 100 years of age. So, my math majors here, if she was 100 years old when she died, and subhanAllah, on a side note, you know, she never lost her aql. Ibn Kathir writes, she didn't lose any of her memory. She didn't go senile, even though she was 100 years of age. And she didn't lose a single tooth. Today, look at our teeth and how many cavities and fake teeth we have. Look at the health problems. Look at our diets and look at how we live. So, Asma radiallahu anha, if she died at, a, at the age of 100, at 73 years after Hijri, how old was she when, when Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam made the Hijri? 27? 27 years of old. MashaAllah, faith. Good job. So if she was 27, and she was how many years older than Aisha? How old was Aisha radiallahu anha? 17 years of age. So according to this report, the age of Aisha radiallahu anha, at the time she was given in marriage, was going to be a year or two before Hijri, so she was 15 or 16 years of age. And three years after that, when the marriage was consummated, she was how old then? 19? 20, 18, something like that. And these are some of the reports that have been mentioned. And I have the books here if you want to take a look at them. I'm not saying this is the only opinion of the strongest. I'm introducing you to all of what's out there. According to Ibn Hajar al-Qalani in Al-Isaba, the Tamil al-Sahaba, he has also mentioned that the age of Asma radiallahu anha to be the same. And he has also mentioned that Asma radiallahu was 10 years older. A tabari he mentions that Aisha radiallahu was born four years before Nabuwa. Tabari has a view that she was born four years before Nabuwa. In another opinion, four years after Nabuwa. So what does that tell you? That even Ibn Hajar and Tabari, they were not able to produce exact ages of when Aisha radiallahu was born. Now it's very important to understand why. The Arab had no calendar. Even today, even though we have calendars today, I mean every country has a calendar. Right? There's no country now that doesn't have a calendar. But even today, those of you born in other countries, if you ask your grandmother, how old are you? She'll tell you, well, I don't really know. You know. I was born a few years before this person, or a few years after that person, or my mother said you were born in this year. One of my own teachers, Sheikh Sadiq al manna from Sudan, I told him, when were you born? He says, Wallahi, I don't really know. All my mother told me is it was the year that rained a lot. He says, when we went to Saudiya to study as little kids, they just made up birth dates for us. Many of the brothers that came to the United States from Somalia, if you look at their birthdays, subhanAllah, they were all born on the 1st of January. <laughs> I'm not sure what happened nine months before that in Somalia, but apparently, most of the brothers of Somalia were all born the same day and it was the 1st of January. New Year's, according to the solar calendar, was apparently you know, a day of birth in Somalia. Why? Because many of these cultures don't really care when you were born. What you're more concerned about 
is when you die. And what you did in your life. You know, Al-Bidaya wal Nihaya, you know how it's organized? All of our tulab of ilm, you never open the book, you just look at it online. It's organized by the year people die. So if you want to look up Asma bint Abi Bakr radiallahu anha, you can't look up her name. You can't look up her birthday. You can't look up, you have to look up her death year. And then it will cover everybody who died that year and what their life was about. And that's how most of the Islamic scholars they deal. And if you look at the lives of most of the Islamic scholars, and you look at their biography, they will say, well, it was said he was born in this year, or maybe this year, or it was unknown when he was born, but he died this year. And usually when you look at the name of the scholar, the death date will be given. More common than their birth. So, these are very important factors to understand. Because when we go to the narration from Sahih al-Bukhari, and narration 3894, Aisha radiallahu anha herself says that I was given at, uh, to be married and in the nikah at the age of six and the marriage was consummated at the age of nine. But in another report which is in Sahih Muslim hadith number 1422 she says I was given at the age of seven. So you see even though they're all Sahih and another report, it says that consummation was at the age of 10. So based on this, one thing to understand, we do not doubt the authenticity of these ahadith. There's no doubt. These apologetics today, these wannabes, they come out, oh no, no, it's in Bukhari, but no, no, no. need to sell out. The hadith is sahih without a doubt. What does that mean though? It means the salat is connected, there are five shuruq, everybody knows for Sahih Hadith, right? Al-Bukhari has more even, mashallah. Muslim has more as well. There is no weak narrator. There is no ilal in the wording. There's no grammatical errors. There is no iqlab in it. We say the Hadith is Sahih. Aisha Rabiya said this, no doubt. But did she actually know her age or not? Allah knows best. Because many people today, even I'm telling you today, you go to the Muslim lands, you go to villages, you go to deserts, they don't, they may guess at their age. So did she say that? Sure she did, no doubt. But was she right about her own age? Allah knows best. Because if you look at what her own sister Asma said about her own age, it contradicts what Aisha radiallahu said. So she might not have known her own age. And if she did, and if she is correct, then we are proud of this. We as Muslims are not ashamed of anything. I'm discussing this academically. I'm not uh, uh, discussing this to apologize for anything. Academically, looking at the age of Asma radiallahu anha, looking at some of the historical incidences, record, looking at some of the events that Aisha did reports that she saw, that she would have been two or three years old if she saw. Looking at that, it is possible that she was older. It is also possible that she was six at the time of engagement or seven. And the difference in narration shows that she himself, herself may have said different numbers at different times, not being sure. Sometimes she said six, sometimes she said seven. Consummation, sometimes she said nine, sometimes she said ten. Those are all Sahih Ahadith. So this means she wasn't really that concerned about the exact age. But understanding all of these aspects, what do we know for sure? That she was at an age that the Arab took as regular to be engaged, because she was already engaged to Zubayr. And she was married at an age that was acceptable by the Arab because there was no objection raised to. And Aisha Radiana herself says in the hadith in a tirmidhi that the woman, the Arab at that time would reach puberty at the age of nine. It's a separate hadith, it has nothing to do with her marriage. But it does tell us something about the custom and the physical uh, makeup of the women of the Arab. That around that age, they would be physically ready to be married. Now, many ulema of the past, they have discussed this issue. But they have said that this does not bring a hukam for the age when it's ready to be married or not. Puberty, bulu. Rather, if you look at Al-Mughni or Al-Majmu or all these books, what do the ulema mention? They say that 
getting a hay or hitting blue is not necessarily a sign of a woman being ready for marriage. Rather, they give two conditions. One, physical ability, physically being ready. And they said that trustworthy woman should know before giving a woman in marriage if she's physically ready. And second, emotional or mental prepared, being prepared. Because many women may physically be ready but not mentally ready. So what is the minimum and maximum for marriage? Islam looks at urf. It looks at the common traditions of the place. Because places change, times change. Mental, you know, a woman today in America at the age of 16, in my opinion, is at a mental level of a 10 year old in the past age. Women 10 years old would be, would be mentally mature and physically mature in the Arabian desert as a woman who's maybe 18 or 20 here. And that doesn't just go for women. Brothers, you as well. You will see a 30, 40, 50 year old brother who's spending 4 or 5 hours a day playing video games. Think about this. Go back to the Muslim land. Go back to the time of the Prophet ﷺ. Can you imagine a man, a Bakr who's sitting and playing like, you know, little board games? So, so the maturity level changes. We will discuss Mu'ad and Mu'awad ibn Amr. They're both the sons of Amr ibn Jamur. Jamur. We'll discuss them today. Keep this in mind when we talk about being mature. So these kinds of things change from place and time. So what age was Aisha radiyanha at the time of her marriage? Allah knows best. If you look at the narration from Asma radiyanha, she comes out to be 15, 16 at the time of being given in marriage, 17 at Hijrah, and 19, 18 at the time of consummation around that. But if you look at the narration from Al-Bukhari of Aisha herself, she comes out to be 6 or 7 at the time that the nikah was then was given, and, and 9 or, or 10 at the, ten, at the time that she was married off. And there's nothing wrong with this. And to keep things in perspective, because people are not just when they discuss. When you want to discuss something, let's be just about it. Let's be fair about it. Let's discuss things openly. If you look at Western history, and I'm not going to go all the way back to the time of the Prophet because when he was married to Khatija radiallahu anha, and then to Aisha radiallahu anha, this is more than 437 years from Hijri. 1437 years. 1437. Let's not go that far. Let's just go back about 600 years ago. Richard II of England married Isabel of France when she was seven years old. Historic fact. Only 600 years ago. 1396. This is less than half the time that it's been for Rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam. So let's not even go that far back. So if Western historians, Orientalists, when these people in the West want to argue with us, let's be fair about it. When I read about Richard II, all I read from Orientalists is how wonderful of a marriage it was, how it brought peace between England and France, and they praised this marriage. She was seven years old. So how come you don't use the same label when discussing Richard II of England? When we talk about Beatrice de Esta, the Duchess of Milan in current Italy, and this is only 500 years ago, even more recent, in 1475, she was given in marriage at the age of five. At the age of five. Historical fact, look it up, Wikipedia, Google, whatever. And she was married at 15. Even today, in 2016, today, the age of consent to be married in Japan is what? Yes. Today, what? 13 years old. Today, the age in Austria, 14. In Bulgaria, 14. In Denmark, 15. In France, 15. In Italy, 14. In Spain, 13. In Argentina, 13. In Canada, 14. In Colorado, 15. In Mexico, wait, why are you guys smiling? <laughs> 12. 12. Right next door in Mexico. So why can't we be fair about this? Let's talk about the Bible. 
Because most Christians love to bring up this issue. Those evangelical people and all 700 club, blah, blah, blah. Let's look at the Bible. Maryam, as they call Mary in the Bible. Now, Muslims, we don't believe it. All right? I'm discussing this from a biblical perspective now. Mary, according to the Bible, was married at 12 to Joseph, who was Mahdi, 90 years old. Bible. You want to talk about name calling? You want to talk about making cartoons and pictures? Let's talk about it. Let's be fair about it. A 12 year old marrying a 90 year old? Rebecca, according to the Bible, not the Quran, not Quran. We don't believe Maryam salam, was married to Joseph. We don't have this misconception that God had a stepfather and kind of, or maybe, a, I don't know. How did that work? <laughs> anyway. Um, but Rebecca was married to Ishaq, Isaac. According to the Bible, when she was how old, Mahdi? Three years old. Go look it up. Google it. Three years old? You want to you wanna point fingers? Seriously? According to Jewish law, for all my debaters from the Jewish faith, <laughs> according to Jewish law, there's a book, and I actually got a PDF of this book. I might actually go buy it. It's called A History of Messianic Law uh, of Purities by Jacob Neusner. He says, according to Judaic law, a woman can be married when she's three years and one day old. And I'm not going to elaborate on this, but according to him, not just a nikah, but the consummation can be done at three years and one day old. Go look it up. It's not a Muslim author. We didn't make this stuff up. Three year old? Seriously? And now you want to debate with us? So when we discuss these issues, it has to be discussed in fairness. You have to discuss it looking at every aspect. You can't point a finger not realizing what your scriptures may say. We as Muslims, we as Muslims, we love the Sharia. And what does the Sharia teach us? That you have to look at the urf of a people. Why? Because if you say, like an atheist may say, oh I don't believe in the Bible, I don't believe in the Bible. But how old do you think a woman should be when she gets married? Well, somebody may say 18, somebody may say 20. Because when you don't have divine law, you can make up anything you want. So you tell me something today. The average life expectancy, expectancy in Angola, Africa, today, you know how much it is? Average life expectancy in Angola, Africa, 37 years. Today, countries like Afghanistan and places aren't far away in their 40s. Many other countries in Africa, they're in the 30s. That's average. That means many people die before they even become 30. Many people die in their 20s. Because the average expectancy is 37. Now, if you want somebody to wait till they're 25 to get married, and 28 to when they have kids, or 30, when are they going to raise their kids? <laughs> You're going to be like, okay, I just got married, just had the birth. Wow. <laughs> many people won't even make it to that age. So you can't implement your ideas on other times and places. That's why the Sharia is so practical. The Sharia tells us that you have to look at the physical abilities, the physical characteristics of whether she's ready, and the mental characteristics of whether she's ready, and judge by the arf, by the local customs and tradition of the land. In America, maybe it's true, women aren't ready to get married until they're 16 or 17 or 18 or whatever. But that may not be the case in Angola. So Sharia is so practical that it's applicable, it works in Angola, and it works here, and it worked from the time of the Prophet and it works till the day of judgment.